What's up guys, ATCG here. Welcome back to Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck of the Day. And today we're profiling a requested deck, a deck that hasn't seen the light of day for quite a while, and it's World Chalice. Back in the day, World Chalice used to be a decent rogue pick. It even managed to win a YCS, but lately it hasn't been seen that much play. But I think the deck still can do pretty much unstoppable combos. If the deck can go through a lot of the disruption, the current meta has, then it has a really good matchup against pretty much anything, because the fields it can make going first and the amount of pressure it can uh, produce going second is very, very impressive. The problem with the deck is that it needs to learn a lot of bricky cards, so the best way to optimize the deck is to run a lot of cards that help you play all the hands, no matter how many bricks you have in the deck. So that's what I try to do with this deck, and I'll show you the build that I've come up with, that it's the one that has the more starters and the less dead cards that you can possibly have in your hand. So let's begin with the World Chalice Monsters. We have three World Legacy World Chalice. Pretty much the best monster in the deck. This card, when you resolve it, then the amount of damage that you can put on the board going second, the amount of advantage you can get on the board going first, so you can end with an amazing end board is insane because you use the extra normal with Imduck to summon this, and then you link it away and you special summon two World Chalice Monsters from your deck. So you get your Lee, you get your Guard Dragon, Lee will give you another Surge, Guard Dragon will be able to give you back another monster from the grave later during the combo. So it's really insane what you can do when you resolve this card. Speaking of Guard Dragon, play two, because you need to have access to it in the deck in order to summon it. And it also has a second effect that a lot of people do not think uh, about too much, but it's really a good effect. Because it's within your hand or field, you can send to the graveyard to protect a monster, one of your linked monsters from being targeted. So it can also act as a pseudo call by the grave when your opponent tries to affect Valor, maybe your Miko or one of your other cards. So it's not that bad drawing it, so that's why you need to, to make sure that you always have one in your deck. One Lee. Lee used to be a three of, but I think right now it's not the best normal summon because you would need an extender in order to be able to use the combo with the War Legacy War Chalice. The Miko starters, uh, I think, are the best normal summons you can have in the deck, so you can get to your Miko, and then you can get to your plays much faster, so you can get more advantage going. And of course, one word chalice of the chosen. This card is the vanilla. You get unexpected die in the deck, so you can special summon from the deck. It's a level 3, so you can sometimes use other monsters, play a lot of level 2 tuners in the deck. So if you have drawn one of these, which are considered bricks, and you have an unexpected die, then you can go into Miko this way. So it's, I think, one of the vanilla monsters that you need to play. The level 2 and the level 4 are not that um, useful compared to this one. Now let's start with uh, normal summons. I'm playing first, of course, 3 Draconet with the 1 Galax Serpent. Of course, you need to summon your Miko as fast as possible, so any monster that can get you to a level 5 Synchro is how you usually want to start with a deck, and there are a lot of good ways to get to Miko. Draconet is the first one. You can get, of course, you can start with Signed Mining. The next one is Mathematician, and you send Carbon Atom with it, and with it you special summon Dino Wrestler Coil Assault. This card, you can also summon it from your hand if you have no monsters, so it's the level 2 tuner dinosaur that I think is the most optimal for this deck because even if you happen to draw it, again, you can special summon it. That's the way to approach this deck that you need to make sure that your bricks aren't that much of a brick when you happen to draw them. And Mathematician, of course, is another good normal summon. I do not run Oviraptor because Oviraptor uh, means that you have a level 4, so level 1 to make your Ib, but I think Koala Slat is a bit better because you can special summon it and have an extender if you control no monsters. Now I play some dangers because I think dangers help you get to your cards faster. They help you get extenders on the field. So I play just the six best dangers, two Nessie, two Jackalope, and two Chuchinoko. And there's one monster in the extra deck that makes Jackalope and Chuchinoko much, much better. And I'll explain once I get there. One Destrudo. Destrudo usually is material for the guard dragons because you send to the graveyard with the Dragon Ravine and you search your Dragon Ravine with Romulus. And once you spam back the suitor from the graveyard, it usually is a level 4 or, high or lower, so you can use it as material for LP and Pisty. And one Gamasiel, because of course it's a War Chalice deck, so the most optimal thing you can do turn 1 is get your Gamasiel on the field with Skaldred and have a lot of counters on your waterfront to have plenty of negates. Now for the spells, 3 Sanded Mining, of course you need to get your Draconet. The discard is not as relevant as people think, because there are cards like the Strudo or Carbonadon that if you happen to draw them, then you need to get them to the graveyard. 
or they can be more useful in the graveyard. So it's not like the discard is that bad. Unfortunately, it doesn't discard actually. It sends a monster from a card from the hand of the grave, so it doesn't trigger the dangers, which would have been really nice. But we can get what we have. Three unexpected die because you need to start having a lot of more monsters on the field, starting the field on the field with chosen. If you happen to draw your Dino Wrestler or your Galaxy Serpent, then you can get to Miko this way. So it's a card that helps you unbreak your bad hands. For the field spells, two waterfront. Any time a card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you put a counter on it. If you have three or more counters, you get to add your Gamma Skill from the deck. You can protect this card by removing a counter, so it's not like your opponent can Ghost Ogre it. And of course, with Gamma Skill, you can remove two counters from anywhere, usually your field spell, and you can negate anything. So that's your most... Uh, optimal turn one play that you want to establish and one dragon ravine because of romulus you also play the one terraforming to search either of these but usually you want to search ravine with romulus and you send destrudo to the graveyard so you can have more link plays if you already have access to destrudo you can send your wall chasgar dragon so you have more than one target now for the one-offs play foolish because sometimes i do not uh, open up with mathematician or draconet but with this i can send your carbonet on to bring your dinosaur from the deck so it's an extender one monster reborn to get you back to the game if your opponent starts disrupting your place so you can have more extenders and same thing with word legacy succession and succession of course is the card you're going to be searching with your miko and the last card is three call by the grave because of course this is a combo deck so you need to make sure that your plays go through this deck can sometimes play around nibiru it kind of depends on whether your opponent tries to wait for you to waste more resources so that they can nibiru later or if they do it early if they do it early, most likely they will stop your plays, but you will still have some resources, maybe for next turn. If they do it late, they risk you summoning up Alosa before they get the chance to do it. So it's kind of, um, it depends on what your opponent has in their head. Now for the extra deck, of course, one Miko, probably the best synchro monster in this time and era. It's generic level five synchro. You get to search your word legacy succession when you summon it. And if it goes to the grave, you can spell summon a word size monster from your deck. Usually you get your Lee, and you get your guard dragons, and then you can get your combos, and that's pretty much how you want to start your, your combo. One Imdak gives you the extra normal summon. It's the card that you summon War Legacy War Chalice with, and then if you have another monster on the field, you can link it away with War Legacy War Chalice, and then you can pretty much start your engine going. One Alamirage Mirage, because you need to need a monster to be able to tag out your Lee or your World Chalice Guard Dragon, depending on what you have on the field. So it's a better option than any other thing. And because these monsters are level 2, uh, Link Reba doesn't work with it, but Almiras is a really good addition for the deck. And one Link Spider, because of Galaxy Serpent and your Chosen, sometimes you need uh, a marker or uh, something. If you draw both Vanillas in your hand, then you can tag out the one for Link Spiders, but some of the other one from the hand and have a Link 2 on the field. And these are the little scenarios that you need to think about when playing such a combo deck. You need to make sure that your extra deck is a ready for pretty much any kind of scenario that will unbreak your own hand. For the guard dragons, LP and Pisti, of course, pretty good cards. You get your Destrudo, you get your guard, World Chalice Guard Dragon, everything you need. You get your Skaldred, you dig for more cards. Basically, you're trying to dig for Waterfront, or you're trying to make an Appaloosa for four materials, so you can have a lot of disruption and then possibility to cater in the next turn. One Priestess. Priestess is the best monster that you can uh, make for the World Chalice because she points, if you summon her in the main monster zone, she gives you two more markers during left and right, and she needs generic materials with any monsters with different types and attributes, and she also can protect your monsters. One Romulus to search your Dragon Ravine, give you access to Desurdo. One Cherubini. This is the reason I said that Jackalope and Tsutsunoko are really good in the deck because if your opponent stops your Draconet or your Mathematician, then that would usually mean that your turn ends sometimes. But if you have the level 3 extender and you can summon this, you can send Carbonate into the graveyard because it's a level 3. So you can use Carbonate on to special summon your Dino Wrestler from the deck. And if you have something else, then you can start building up your board this way. Or you can just end on an Appaloosa, which would be better than nothing if you didn't have the extender and the Cherubini in the extra deck. One Phoenix, because the deck doesn't have any inherent way of dealing with back rows, sometimes you need to deal with this one pesky floodgate. Maybe there can be only one or something else your opponent might have. Or maybe your opponent just has one back row, so you want to clear it before you go for an ATK. So I think it's the only nightmare you need to run. One Triple Burst to make sure your Guard Dragon combos are more flexible and you have more options in order to make sure that you can always get the markers you need for the LP and Pisty. One Skaldred, because you want to dig for your Waterfront. And this is a way to special summon Gamma Seal from your hand when you search with Waterfront. One Apollosa, 
she usually is the last resort play when your opponent starts disrupting you and you kind of manage to get a lot of monsters on the field and you can just summon her with three or four negates so that usually enough to survive a turn so you can possibly gain during the next turn Borosword, because the deck can summon a lot of monsters very easily, and Borosword is the easiest way to ATK. And one Borload, because Thunder Dragons are still a thing, so you need to have it in your extra deck just in case you face them to be able to combat the Colossus and the Titan. So, yeah, that's the deck. I think it's a deck that has a lot of potential. It gets It's getting a new Link monster, but I think this Link monster is more suited for Mech Knights, so I don't see it doing anything in this particular deck. But it's still a very fun combo deck. It's one that has a lot of options. It can get a lot of monsters on the field. And it's a combo deck that you don't see often, so your opponent might not know exactly what to stop. If they just think they can stop the normal summon, and that'll be it. Sometimes that's not enough to stop this deck. So I think it's a really good deck to play around with. And I think it's a lot of fun. It can possibly... I think it topped, uh, or maybe it day two uh, YCS recently. So people still remember the deck exists, so maybe we'll see it top once again in the near future. So, yep. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to our channel, like the video, tell us what you want to see next, and we'll see you next time.